Rod Association. The Summer Nationals. Brought to you by Kodak, whose color burst instant cameras give you bright, brilliant, bursting color by Kodak. And by English Leather Toiletries for Men. Ask for English Leather at fine toiletry counters everywhere. And by Fram, makers of oil, air, and fuel filters, windshield wipers, and Autolite spark plug and tune-up kit. You're at the wheel of a top fuel dragster, 2,000 horsepower, and all you can see is blue sky. That's what faced Larry Booker of Linden, New Jersey. He is the car in the near lane. This is qualifying at the Summer Nationals. Watch as Larry Booker leaves the starting line. The power continues to increase, and the wheel stand gets higher until Larry Booker finally has to back out of it. The car comes joltingly back to the ground here in slow motion you see the wheel stand starting booker trying to keep it under control finally just cuts the power completely and it comes to ground steve evans talked with larry booker what causes a wheel stand like that and what can you do to prevent them well the traction is really good and uh it, it's just a matter of a balance between the motor and the uh and the tire traction it's all in the clutches where it's at did it shake you up physically coming down that hard? Well, it bounced pretty good, but other than that, I uh, didn't hurt anything. Well, it's got to be an eerie sensation for Larry Booker as the horizon just disappeared on him. Another eerie sensation for this driver, Dennis Fairman from Houston, Texas. The traction, unbelievable at the starting line at Raceway Park. You see right here the entire left rear wheel assembly of Dennis Fairman's Chevy Vega just spun off at the hub. Fairman out of competition at the Summer Nationals. Another sensation that nobody wants to experience, Jay Adams of Washington Cross, Pennsylvania, heads off the track into the guardrail with his Chevy Corvette. The car slamming into the rail, coming back to four wheels, then beginning to tilt on its side, and finally Jay Adams on his head. Steve Evans once again. Well, the good news, Dave, after a spectacular upset is that Jay Adams of Pennsylvania is okay. At least you look okay. Yeah, I'm okay. The bad news is that a very valuable Corvette race car has been completely destroyed. Very valuable and very, very beloved. How will this affect your future racing plans, Jay? It depends on how many people I can, uh, I can rely on to help me put it back together. Well, without a roll bar, uh, I don't think we'd be standing here talking like this. Not I hope right. you salvage more than you think you can. Jay Adams is A-OK, -okay, but sure disappointed. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave McClelland, and along with Steve Evans, we'll be bringing you all the excitement of this ninth annual Summer Nationals from Raceway Park near Englishtown, New Jersey. We'll be back in just a moment. Doesn't the country need Howard? Here, pretend you're a farmer. These are times of your life to remember. And smile. In pictures, to help make those pictures look their best, ask for Kodak paper behind them. And remember, using Kodak film doesn't mean you automatically get Kodak paper. So look for these words. Look for this sign when you get your pictures developed and get them on Kodak paper for a good look. Howie, who took this one? Sooner or later, they all come to me. Some of them, regrettably, before their time. If you want to keep your car from coming to me prematurely, look after it. Change the oil regularly and put in a Fram oil filter when you're supposed to. It could help keep your engine from coming to grief. The choice is yours. See me now or see me later. Fram and Autolite are Bendix companies. Come on in, Thurman. What's the problem? I'm playing good ball. You certainly are. In my opinion, Thurman Munson's the finest catcher in the game. The problem is you're not shaving. I do shave. It must be my electric razor. Maybe it's not your razor. It's your beard. It just lays there. Get it to stand up with Williams Electric Shave. The razor will shave closer, cleaner, with less irritation. I'm going to use electric shave. 
Then I'll be the best looking catcher in the game. Well, one of the best. Take the game. See what's new today in a Chevrolet. To the more than 600,000 people who bought the new Chevrolet during its very first year, thank you. You've made it the most popular car in America. For the rest of you, a simple reminder. With its advanced design, the new Chevrolet has more headroom, more rear seat legroom, more trunk room, and more. So drive it. The new Chevrolet. Now that's more like it. Summer Nationals action with Top Fuel Eliminator. Before we get to the racing, let's meet some of the drivers in the first round of racing. At the age of 24, Jeb Allen of Santa Rosa, California, the youngest driver in the field. Richard Tharp from Dallas, Texas, driving the long blue machine of the Candies and Hughes team. The defending champion, the reigning world champion, Shirley Muldowney from Mount Clemens, Michigan. From El Toro, California, comes Gary Beck, the number one qualifier in Top Fuel. The winningest driver ever in Top Fuel Eliminator, Don Garlitz of Sefner, Florida. An up-and-coming racer from Columbus, Ohio, Jake Coughlin. Johnny Abbott out of Denver, Colorado. The man that's won three of four major championship events in 1978, Kelly Brown from Calabasas, California. And here is the first race of the first round. Graham Light from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, in the near lane from Columbus, Ohio, Jake Coughlin. And it's Jake Coughlin off the line first, holding it under control, extending his lead and taking the win. Jake Coughlin, 5.97 seconds, his speed 239 miles an hour, the best performance ever by Jake Coughlin. Jake started through the ranks driving pro comp type cars, worked his way up to top fuel, and right now with a first round win here at the Summer Nationals. Jake unstrapping himself out of his fire suit as the next pair of cars fired and ready to go. Here's the Candies and Hughes car from Homa, Louisiana. Richard Tharp, the driver, a former world champion, former national champion. His competition, Bill Pryor from Barry, Illinois. Pryor driving Jim Daramore's car. Both drivers having completed their burnouts, approaching the starting line, easing into the staging beam. The electronic starting system will signal when it's time to go. And it's Tharp straight and true down the quarter mile racing surface. And Richard Tharp wins it 6.06 seconds, a fine speed of 245 miles an hour at the end of the quarter mile. Paul Longenecker from Arcanum, Ohio has the dubious distinction of winning the man that's on the hottest winning streak ever in Top Fuel Eliminator. This is Kelly Brown driving the Brissette and Drake car. Brown having won three out of four national championships in 1978, had lots of problems in qualifying, was only able to qualify in the number 16 position. So thus, he is not necessarily as strong at this event as he has been at the previous races in 78. And it's showing right here. There goes the motor for Kelly Brown. And Paul Longnecker takes the win. 6.03 seconds. His speed, 226 miles an hour. Let's go back in slow motion and look again. You see Longnecker beginning to pull the lead right from the starting line as Kelly Brown falling further and further behind. The motor finally going away. It is Paul Longnecker taking the win. He'll be ready for round two. Let's go to Steve Evans. We've had trouble all weekend. Uh, I think our team made the right decision by uh, waiving our points for this race. And uh, we're going to be at Canada, the next one on the NHRA circuit. And uh, hopefully we'll be as tough as ever. One of the new teams out of the West Coast. This is Larry Miner's car with veteran Larry Dixon at the wheel. Dixon hailing from North Hollywood, California. Formerly driving his own car that used to be powered by a Chevrolet. Now Dixon at the wheel of Larry Miner's car. Here you see the Keith Black engine top fuel dragster in the burnout. The tires growing in height with the centrifugal force trying to throw the rubber off the rim. The tires heating up to the point that they're actually burning. That's where the smoke comes from. The reason for all of this, the purpose is to heat the tires to get the most traction available. Here's Hank Endres. Endres from Pennsville, New Jersey, not far away from the Old Bridge Township site of Raceway Park near Englishtown. 
Here we see the staging beam and the lights that greet the drivers at the top of the Christmas tree, which is the electronic starting device. The two pre-staged lights indicate they're nearing the starting line. The staging beam says they're ready to go. The starter throws the switch, and Hank Andrews heads for the center line. But he straightens it out and pulls out a big win over Larry Dixon. 6.17 second elapsed time, 227 miles an hour as Hank Endres, the local boy, makes good. Here you see the car starting to go out of control. Endres drives it back into the center of the lane. Meantime, he keeps his foot flat to the floor on the accelerator pedal, and that gets him to the finish line first over Larry Dixon. The reigning world champion, the defending champion here at the Summer Nationals, this is Shirley Maldani from Mount Clemens, Michigan. Her competition, Wayne Ernest from Elkhart, Indiana. Ernest, another former pro comp racer that has graduated into the professional category of top fuel here in 1978. Shirley Muldowney winning the world championship last season and beginning to regain the form that carried her to that championship event. 6.08 seconds, 234 miles an hour as Wayne Ernst goes down to defeat. One of the newest drivers in Top Fuel Eliminator, he didn't even stop at Procom. He came from a street roadster in Modified Eliminator came right into top fuel racing and qualified well into this program at the Summer Nationals. This is Neil Marr, a printer by trade from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. His competition, Johnny Abbott, a longtime veteran from Denver, Colorado, driving the Frazier and Abbott Special. He will be in the far lane as we look at these two cars getting ready to leave the starting line here at the Summer Nationals. Both cars ready, the tree goes green, and it's Johnny Abbott with immediate, and the motor exploding in Neil Barr's car. Neil, very wise for the few trips he's made down the track in a top fuel dragster, immediately puts the parachute out, slowing the car to a halt. But you saw there the motor exploding here in slow motion. Let's watch it one more time. As you can see, Neil Marr with problems, the motor expiring, Johnny Abbott not to be headed, going 597, a fine elapsed time at 239 miles an hour. Wearing the number four, indicating he finished fourth in the world last season from Napa, California, Frank Bradley, matched up against the 1972 winner of this event, Jeff Allen. He was only 18 years old, the youngest winner ever of a top fuel title at an NHRA national event. Jeff Allen against Frank Bradley, and Allen, a big lead in the middle of the track, and he gets bigger at the finish line. Allen wins at 6'10", 229 miles an hour. The losing time, a fine and respectable 6'19", by Frank Bradley. The race that everybody's been waiting for. Don Garland against Gary Beck. Beck qualified number one. Don Garland made it to the number nine spot. And these two gentlemen are fighting for the second place currently in the World Championship point standings. Kelly Brown has a big lead, but not one that is not insurmountable. And Beck currently number two. Garland's trying to move up into that position. There's only one man that can win this race. We're just 1,320 feet away from that finish line to decide who it is. Garland's, of course, the winningest driver in the history of top fuel racing. Gary Beck, former national champion, former world champion. Again, trying to regain some of the form, and it's side by side. They're both off the starting line together, and a close race at the finish. Low elapsed time of the meet. 5.86 seconds for Gary Beck at 245 miles an hour. Don Garlett, 5.91 seconds. His speed, 241. Beck moving just a little bit before Garlett's possibly the middle of the tractor side by side. Beck's motor starting to give him some problems, but he holds on at the finish line to take the win. Gary Beck, the winner. Let's go to Steve. Well, for Gary Beck, it is mission accomplished. Gary, you've been after Big Daddy for a long time, trying to stop him on points. You don't know the elapsed time, do you? I haven't heard. Did it feel good? It felt great. Low elapsed time of the meet, 586. Terrific. I didn't see him anywhere, and I, I thought I heard him down the lights. I knew it was close. Well, I'm plenty pleased to beat him, I'll tell you that. He beat me last weekend. He's a tough customer, and I'm, I'm enjoying this every second. I'm Shirley Muldowney. 
All my life, I wanted to be the world's fastest racing driver. Well, I made it. Made a few men nervous, too. But others understood. They weren't threatened. They rooted for me. Men like that are pretty special. Their English leather cologne is pretty special, too. English leather has a fresh, masculine scent that doesn't have to prove anything. And neither do the men who wear it. That's why all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. The day is done. Come in. Chilly tonight. You looking good. To let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome home. So just say, bud. Say, bud. And pour the king of beers. And settle back. And please yourself. Hey, thanks. How'd it go today? So far, so good. Not everyone will understand the language spoken by this Chevy Camaro. For those who understand the language, we recommend the car. For the past three years, if you talk about consistency, there is only one man in all of drag racing you can talk about. That is Don Prudhomme, three-time world champion, three successive years in funny car racing. Defending champion here at the Summer Nationals, he established both ends of the track record and also qualified number one at 6.02 seconds elapsed time. Earlier, Steve Evans talked with us Snake. Don, your talents behind the wheel are well documented. You've won more NHRA titles than any other driver in any class. But we both know there's some fine drivers here. Everybody has access to essentially the same components to build and race their cars. What makes the Snake's Venom so consistently potent? Well, you know, <laughs> that's something that's hard to explain, Steve. You know, I I've been doing this for a long time, and I know several of the other fellows have too, but it's a business with us. It's a crew, it's an organization that we put together to, to win races, basically, and, uh, and to do nothing else. And, and to win races and do the things we do, it's 100% it's effort. And I believe that stands true for any kind of racing. It's, it just takes a well-organized team and a lot of know-how, I'd say. Your crew chief, Bob Brand, has been with you through all of these world championships. Does that closeness really help? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a marriage, almost, between the two of us. Uh, been together for several years and we just click you know we, we work out problems together and uh, try and not panic over situations where our competition might and uh, that's one of my key uh, key things is having a good crew and guys like Bob Brandt and Mike Billy uh, the guys are fantastic at an event like this tough competition do you find yourself looking over your shoulder wondering are they catching me are they catching up yet well we find that all the time uh, you know, they're making a big deal about Billy Myers racing him and one thing after another. But if it wasn't Billy, it'd be McCullough or McEwen, someone like that. So, you know, I've been there before. This isn't my first day. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. The only thing that matters is when I come to the line to race him and all that other stuff is just doesn't mean absolutely nothing to me. Well, on your way to a four straight world championship, good luck. Thanks, Dave. Funny Car Eliminator will pick up the action in round number two, but first, let's meet some of the drivers. Tom the Mongoose McEwen from Fountain Valley, California. Ed the Ace McCulloch, he's hailing now from Sanger, California. Denny Savage out of Mission Viejo, California, driving John Powers' car. Ron Colson at the wheel of the famed Hawaiian of Roland Leong, Colson from Addison, Illinois. Gordy Bonin from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Little John Lombardo from North Hollywood, California. The first pairing in the second round of funny car racing finds Tom McEwen. He drives the Corvette bodied car in the near lane against the ace, Ed McCulloch. McCulloch finished in the runner up position here at the Summer National back in 1972 and would love to make it to the winner's circle. Tom McEwen has been very consistent throughout most of 1978. Performance times equaling those, nearly at least, of the snake, has yet to make it to the winner's circle, though. Funny car is quite a handful to drive. The fastest full-bodied cars in all of drag racing. McCulloch with the lead off the starting line. 
And not to be headed, Ed McCulloch, how about this, 6.10, a 6.10 elapsed time, 237 miles an hour. When we talk about elapsed time, that's the amount of time it takes to go from the starting line to the finish line, which is only one quarter of a mile away, and that's all, of course, from a standing start. Denny Savage at the wheel of the power steel, John Powers car, the Camaro body funny car on the tower side, Al Segrini driving for Fred Castronova. And in a close race, it's Denny Savage. A fine 6.12 seconds, 6.12, 236 miles an hour. Segrini gave it a good shot, but with a red light start, a 631 didn't pay off. You saw him move just perceptively ahead of Denny Savage there in the circle. You saw the red light left on the tree, meaning Al Segrini left just a hair too soon. The Canadian car, Gordy Bonnet. 240 Gordy, known as in the drag racing circles. The reason for this, Bonnet loves to drive them fast, and over 240 miles an hour in a funny car is quite quite a speed. John Lombardo from North Hollywood having the best day of his career on the national event circuit. Noted for running in the western part of the United States. Lombardo just blasting ahead of Gordy Bonnet. 6.12 seconds is speed 236 miles an hour as Gordy Bonnet falls to little John Lombardo. Once again, an instant replay, we take a look, as you see, not too far from a straight line does Little John drift. A big lead at the finish, as John Lombardo wins it over Gordy Bonin. Here's Steve Evans. John Lombardo, Los Angeles, California, involved what was unquestionably the closest funny car race of the day, 12 to an 18, 612 to a 618. Well, it is plenty close. If we could cure the shake a little bit in the middle, that'd sure help a bunch. This has been a big event for you, 240 miles an hour in qualifying. Uh, usually it's harder to run in the east, and you're primarily a western racer. Well, we've been coming back these national events, uh, Columbus and some of the others, trying to work out the fuel system so we can run in this bad air and humidity. And it's finally coming around a little bit. The Hawaiian of Roland Leong, Ron Colson at the wheel. The distinction of having to run the number one qualifier, Don Prudhomme. Three times in a row, he has won the world championship. Prudhomme, the most feared driver right now in all of drag racing, regardless of category, regardless of type of car. Bruno, Mr. Consistency. Defending champion at the Summer Nationals, the car owner, Roland Leong, you see him there in the green shirt, directing his driver, Ron Colson, into exactly the spot he wants, where he can find the most traction to give those big, wide, 18-inch tires the bite necessary to get him to the finish line first. But he's got a tough road to hoe. And a hole shot by Ron Colson. Will it pay off at the finish line? A close race, and it's Ron Colson. The upset of the meet, 6.33 seconds to a losing and much quicker 6.17. In instant replay, let's watch. There you see Colson moving first. He has the lead on Prudhomme at the starting line. Will it pay off at the finish, and by how much? There it is, just a wheel width. Once again, let's go to Steve Evans. Don Perdome with a very, very rare starting line miscue. I know uh, you hate to lose at any time, a very competitive guy. Anything happened with the car or just what happened? I just wasn't right, you know. I was just, uh, you know, I was acting a little bit funny behind the start line and just threw my concentration off on the, uh, on the light. And, you know, of course, he had to leave good to beat us, and he did. And then it shook real bad on me, and I just uh, and I got out there. So, I don't know. One of those things. Okay, the snake still leading the world championship chase and still an odds-on favorite to win it. Dave. Thank you, Steve. Let's go back to racing with Pro Stock Eliminator. Eight cars remain in round number two. This the new Ford Fairmont of Bob Glidden. His competition, the Chevy Camaro, finishing number seven in the world last season, Richie Zool. Zool won the Spring Nationals title thus far in 1978. Glidden debuting his brand new car at this event and qualified number one. He's dominated the action as far as times go. Let's see if he can do it on the racetrack when it only counts as to who gets to the finish line first. And this time again, it's Bob Glidden 
8.53 seconds. His speed, 152 miles an hour. Joe Sackberry, big block Chevrolet Camaro. We refer to a big block, we mean a larger cubic inch engine that is in the Chevy Monza of Frank Iacotio. Iacotio here on the near side. And a bit of a staging battle seems to be ensuing. They kind of can stage at their own leisure as long as neither one of them has crept into that final staging beam. There's no time limit involved. Finally, they get there and sat Mary with the whole shot. Finish line, Joe Sackberry, 8.65 seconds. His speed, a fine 157 miles an hour. The odds-on crowd favorite has to be this man, Larry Lombardo, driving for Bill Grumpy Jenkins against the American Butters car of the M&M Boys, Baskin and Mandy Manorino. Andy Manorino doing the driving. Oh, and what a whole shot for Lombardo. Manorino was almost sound asleep as Lombardo left the starting line. It was almost a full car length ahead before Manorino ever moved. Lombardo with the win, 8.64 seconds, 156 miles an hour. The final race in this round of Pro Stock. From Reno, Nevada, the gambler, Mark Ewell. Alongside of him, the other American Motors car, this is Wally Booth. Here you see the Christmas tree as if the drivers are looking at it. One ember light, a green light, and the wheels in the air as they leave the starting line. The AMX in the near lane, the barrel in the far lane, and it's Wally Booth with the win. 8.73 seconds, but the big story there is Mark Ewell went 8.67, so Wally Booth with a whole shot. We'll be back from the Summer Nationals in a moment. Simmons gets a Dear John letter from his girl. So he takes it out on the Major's car. Starts by breaking three spark plugs. Do I give him extra duty? No. I give him Autolite spark plugs. Autolite insulators are 50% stronger than the best-selling plug. So they're less likely to crack and make your car run wrong. So strong that even Simmons can't break them. But heaven knows, he tries. Autolite and Fram are Bendix companies. Introducing the Kellys. From Fayetteville, North Carolina, the Kelly Passenger Radio. From Cumberland, Maryland, the Kelly Truck Tire. From Tyler, Texas, the Kelly RV Tire. From Freeport, Illinois, the Kelly Farm Tractor Tire. From Cumberland, Maryland, the low-cost Ford Fly Tire. For whatever driving you're doing, the Kellys have a tire for you. The Kellys. What a lot. Tough CBS Reports looks at the effects of public employee, pension plans, and more, Tuesday on CBS. Hello, I'm Roger Staubach, bill payer. Marianne, I'm taking Jeff. Great. Let's go, Jeff. One bill we know we're going to reduce is our heating bill, thanks to our year-round one heat pump air conditioner from Carrier. It really will save us money on heat. And it will also give efficient cooling during the summer. Year-round help. Just what a bill payer needs. Call your carrier dealer. We can't control the weather, but we can help you control its cost. Where are you going, America? To Malibu. 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 Looks like a large slice of America is going to Malibu. Chevy's new size, quick size, mid size car that's so right in so many ways for so many people right now. You'd think it had been designed by Mr. John Q. Public himself. It's you, America. A fresh new slice of apple pie called Chevy Malibu. A fresh new slice of apple pie from Chevrolet. You're going to eat it up. In addition to professional category racing of Top Fuel, Funny Car, and Pro Stock, the Summer Nationals Winner's Circle greeted for the first time 35-year-old Alan Peters of Stratford, Connecticut, winning stock eliminator. In Super Stock, 43-year-old Bobby Warren of Clinton, North Carolina, won his ninth national event title. Modified eliminator saw another first-round winner, 27-year-old Bruce Allen of Lapeer, Michigan. Right now, we're ready for final round racing in competition eliminator. Two Econo dragsters making it to the finals in competition. This is John Lingenfelter. His competition, Bobby Cross. Lingenfelter's car powered by a somewhat larger engine than his Cross. 
And in competition eliminator, it's handicap racing, a full Christmas tree of five amber lights, crossed because he has got the slower car, according to the NHRA National Index, will receive a physical head start over Lingenfelter. See the Christmas tree, the lights begin to count down. There goes Cross and a red light for Lingenfelter. He just couldn't wait, watching his competition disappear down the racetrack. So Bobby Cross wins it, the red light by Lingenfelter putting him out of competition. Bobby Cross, your competition eliminator finalist and titleist here at the Summer Nationals. This is now the top of the line of sportsman category racing. Pro Comp, here's Dale Hall. Hall's car somewhat unique. It uses a small block Chevrolet engine, supercharged, running on alcohol, but it's a front engine dragster. Back a few years ago, every dragster in competition was a front engine car. Then in 1971, made successful by Don Garland's, the rear engine design took over, is used in all categories where dragsters are legal. And Dale Hall with a big lead, something going wrong. Hall out of control, almost crosses in front of Dale Armstrong. Hall finally gets it back into his own lane. Something going wrong with the car. Dale Armstrong, the Pro Comp champion. In instant replay, we see once again the big lead built up by Dale Hall in his small block Chevrolet. Something begins to go wrong. You see the car making a violent move towards the center line. He crosses it. That would have put him out of competition anyway, but Dale Armstrong the winner. Here again, Steve Evans. You said you didn't think they had final rounds with you in it anymore? No, God, I haven't got my first round this year yet. This man has won Pro Comp in every conceivable type car. Funny car, dragster, roadster, you name it. Mr. Pro Comp, double A Dale Armstrong, and here comes one happy crew. Okay, back to you, David. For 36-year-old Dale Armstrong, his 10th national event victory in pro comp racing and a very, very happy crew congratulating him here at his win at the Summer National. Shirley Muldowney against Richard Tharp. What a matchup. The reigning world champion, Shirley Muldowney against Richard Tharp, the man that won it just a couple of years ago. The burnout's completed. They approach the starting line. Leaving the line together, but Shirley Muldowney beginning to pull ahead. And Shirley Muldowney wins it. 6.03 seconds, 240 miles an hour. Here in instant replay, you see the two cars leave the line together. But then Shirley begins to pull away in the middle of the course as something goes wrong with Tharp's car. Muldowney first to the finish line. Let's go to Steve Evans. Okay, Shirley Muldowney greets her son John and her fine crew, to which she gives an awful lot of credit, a 603. That's pretty good. We didn't expect it. <laughs> 240 miles an hour, and it looks clean and dry. Yeah. The fellas have done a good job this weekend, Steve. They're, I'm really proud of my boys. We had a trouble-plagued uh, early season, but it appears to all be together now again. Yeah, you know, we tried to work out a few problems and see if we could run the car in the fives and then the low sixes and not hurt it, and I think that's exactly what's happened. Jake Coughlin enjoying the best day of his career. Jake started in pro comp racing a few years ago, drove several different types of cars, graduated last season into top fuel racing. His competition is from Denver, Colorado. Johnny Abbott, a longtime veteran up in the high country, but coming on strong in the national scene with his partner Larry Frazier over the past several years. Two five-second cars coming to the starting line in summer nationals competition. This is round number two racing in top fuel eliminator. Huge crowd on its feet to watch the action on the quarter mile racetrack of championship drag racing. Abbott out first, Coughlin in trouble, the engine goes away, and he holds on for the win. He pulls the parachute early, that's why he's only got 187 mile an hour speed, but the elapsed time of 6.16 seconds, enough to get into the finish line first, and that's what counts. In the near lane, Jeff Allen, won this event back in 1972. He was only 18 years old. Now just a tender 24. He's a six-year veteran of the professional drag racing wars. Paul Longnecker. Could be a close race. Both cars capable of running well into the fives. Longnecker with the lead. But look at Jeb Allen come on. Winning it from the middle of the track and flashing the V for victory to our Diamond P Sports camera. Jeb Allen, 
takes the win in round number two, and look how close it is. Here again, Steve Evans. Jeb Allen says he won it in the last 50 feet, and I believe that because it appeared that he left on you. You still ran a 593. Well, I didn't think it ran that good, but we're ready. You know, we got everything, and the car's been clicking them off, and this is my race, I hope. Well, this is one man that might dispute that statement, the low qualifier, the man that currently holds low elapsed time of 5.86 seconds. Gary Beck set that time as he defeated Don Garlinson round number one. Hank Endres qualified in the fives. Endres out of Pennsville, New Jersey, just down the road from English Town, practically a hometown boy. Got his work cut out for him, though, against Gary Beck. And Endres knew it. He took a chance. He gambled and lost. A red light left on the starting line by Hank Endres gives the win automatically to Gary Beck, who just coasts through at 112 miles an hour. We'll be back with more racing from the Summer Nationals in just a moment. I think women are becoming a little more frightening to men these days. Maybe because we're freer to do much more. But some men aren't intimidated at all. They enjoy our freedom. Those are the men I like. And you know, those are the men who wear English leather cologne. English leather fits the way they live. It's so clean and natural, and I love it. So all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. Look for English leather in a wide selection of gift sets. Here's a hundred years of tradition coming at you. Here comes the king. Here comes the king. Here comes the big number one. Here comes the king. But why the fear the king is second to none? When you say fun. Clean, clean, clean. Now you know what I go through. Who's that? Mobile. You have detergent gasoline. Mobile? My detergent gasoline? Yeah, that's right, Buster. Well, you're up there with your little sponge. I'm down here with my detergents, ready to keep your carburetor clean so your car will run better. Now, I tell you, I don't get no respect. But why are you telling me all this? Well, who should I talk to? The tires? Mobile. Your detergent gasoline. When we first told Dan Kreitz of Baltimore, Maryland, that his national record holding B. Altered was the recipient of the Fram Summer Nationals Engineering Award, he said, but this is just a little old homemade car. Well, those, those are some of the reasons. This little old homemade car has a very, very sophisticated fuel injection system, all built by these people and their crew down in Baltimore, a very unusual belt-driven oil pump. They built the chassis on this car, fabricated virtually every single piece themselves when they could have gone out and bought it. So Fram says the engineering award to Dan Kreitz. Only four cars remain in the semifinal round of racing in Funny Car Eliminator, and the favorites have fallen by the wayside. Denny Savage races Little John Lombardo, while Ed the Ace McCulloch goes against Ron Colson. In Pro Stock Eliminator semifinal round, we find the brand new Ford Fairmont of Bob Glidden against Wally Booth in the AMX Hornet while the other side of the bracket sees Larry Lombardo against Joe Satmary. The two Chevrolets of Satmary and Lombardo approaching the starting line. Satmary using the big block engine, while Lombardo driving Bill Jenkins' car, sticking with a small block in the Monza body. And a red light start by Satmary, the win automatically to Larry Lombardo. So one Chevrolet will be in the finals of Pro Stock. Lombardo elapsed time, 8.63 seconds, his speed, 155 miles an hour. Here in instant replay, you see Satmary moving just a hair before Lombardo. The American Motors Hornet of Wally Booth. He parlayed a whole shot in the previous round against Mark Yule to make it this far in competition, but he faces the number one qualifier, Bob Clinton, and the Ford Fairmont. Side by side, the horsepower of the Ford pays off at the finish line. 
Glidden, 8.55 seconds at only 149 miles an hour. You see here the lead that Glidden had at the finish line. Here's Steve Evans. Well, it says number two in his window, and that means he finished number two in the world last year, but this year, you're very apt to be number one. Well, it's a long year, yeah, but if things keep going good for us, we very well could finish one. This is the first national event for the brand new Ford Fairmont. You've got to be delighted. Uh, we had a lot of problems the first couple of qualifying days, but at this point, we're tickled. Semi-final racing in Funny Car. The pace picking up a little bit here. The skies have been cloudy all day long, and the weather conditions are beginning to worsen. NHRA trying their best to get this event over. Denny Savage driving John Powers Camaro car. This funny car racing against little John Lombardo. Lombardo for the first time in his life went 240 miles an hour in qualifying. He's not noted for the big numbers. These two cars fairly evenly matched by performances in previous rounds. Savage with the lead. Lombardo drifting towards the edge of the track. He pulls it back into line. But it's too late as Denny Savage gets to the finish line first at 6.19 seconds. His speed, 236 miles an hour. The final two cars in the semifinal round of Funny Car. Ron Colson, the man that pulled the upset against this man, Ed McCulloch. McCulloch has been very consistent with some outstanding elapsed times throughout this entire event. And Ed is ready. The ace won four NHRA national titles several years ago in one year's time. At that time, an unheard of accomplishment. He has not lived up to that notice for the past couple of years, but his brand new car performing very well. Colson we saw just a moment ago with the upset of the race and a red light start for Colson. Utilizing the whole shot in the previous round to defeat Prudhomme. Colson red lights away his chance against Ed McCulloch. McCulloch into the final against Denny Savage. 6.13 seconds, his speed 236 miles an hour. Top Fuel semi-final round finds four cars remaining. Jeb Allen goes against Jake Coughlin. While Gary Beck against the reigning world champion, Shirley Muldowney. Shirley having lots of problems earlier this year, seems to have most of them ironed out. As her crew pushes her back after the burnout to heat up the tires. Gary Beck also for the past couple of years has been having problems. He won the world championship in 1974, two-time national champion. But running through the pit area at this summer nationals event is the word Beck is back. He's got low elapsed time at 5.86 seconds. Had an easy run the round before as Hank Endres red lighted away his chance for the victory against Beck. Beck saving the parts and pieces because he knew that if Shirley won the race in the round before, he'd have to race her right here. Side by side, Beck bouncing a little bit, but he apparently has it under control. A close race at the finish. Another five second time for Gary Beck, 5.97 seconds, an astounding top speed of the meet of 247 miles an hour. Gary Beck into the finals. Let's go into the pits with Steve Evans. Gary's a good racer and I'm glad to see him come back. He's had a down time for a while, but uh, he sure showed us all the way home this weekend, didn't he? Well, I think both your friends and fans, both you and Gary, are happy to have both of you back and running hard. Thank you, Steve. The winner of this race between Jake Coughlin going further than ever in NHRA national competition and Jeb Allen seems to be having problems. The crew down working on the engine, something apparently leaking fluid out onto the racetrack and that's grounds for disqualification if they don't get it fixed. The crew down checking everything over, Jeb anxiously looking back through the roll cage. Apparently everything's all right because the signal comes to bring it to the starting line. It's Jake Coughlin in the far lane, Jeb Allen in the near lane. The winner of this to face Gary Beck in the final. Coughlin and Allen out side by side. Coughlin drifting towards the edge of the track. And Jeb Allen again pulls it out in just the last few feet of the racetrack. 6.02 seconds. 
230 miles an hour. It'll be Jeb Allen against Gary Beck, and here in instant replay, you can see just how close it was. Two of the finest top fuel racers in the country side by side. Here with Gary Beck is Steve Evans. Going into the final round after a 247 mile an hour blast, the head's not even coming off the motor. That's the Gary Beck we knew in 74 when you won the world title. Well, Steve, it's, uh, you know, when you get things right, uh, it starts to come your way. And uh, we had a lot of trouble here qualifying, and, and we heard a piston against Scarlett's in the first round, but we're slowly getting the fuel system uh, worked out the way we know it's supposed to be. And uh, it got an excellent racetrack. It's got an awful lot of traction, and that's how that's, you can go fast. Well, going fast won't be happening for a while. As we said, the weather conditions worsening. The rain is beginning to fall. The NHRA officials shutting them off on the starting line. We were ready for the finals in pro stock. We'll just have to wait and see what the weather does. And we'll be back with the Summer Nationals racing in just a moment. When do you sing? Budweiser. Whenever the moment is right for a great beer. When do you sing? Budweiser. Whenever the good times are moving to right here. After the work is done, while you're still having fun, the king of beers is waiting for your call. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. If you wanted to protect the things you own from the risks of this risky world, you'd want a whole army. This is the Continental Army. Its mission is to protect you, your home, your business, and your car against loss. Anywhere, anytime. If you want that kind of protection, call up the Continental. Because nobody spells protection like the Continental Insurance Company. At the Summer Nationals at Raceway Park near Englishtown, New Jersey, I'm Dave McClellan, and along with Steve Evans, we've had an overnight delay. All during the morning hours today, the rain and water has been dried up off the racetrack using every sophisticated device available to the National Hot Rod Association. And we're ready now for the finals in Pro Stock Eliminator. Bob Clinton debuted a brand new car at this event. Very seldom does a brand new car make it to the finals. Bob Clinton has got it in the finals against the Chevrolet Monza of Bill Grumpy Jenkins. Larry Lombardo intently concentrating on the Christmas tree. The classic Ford versus Chevrolet battle as Glidden goes against Lombardo for the Pro Stock title. They leave the line together. And Glidden appears to be lengthening a lead that takes him to the title. 8.55 seconds at 154 miles an hour. In instant replay, you see them approaching the finish line as Glidden extends the lead that he held from the very start. Let's go to Steve Evans with the Pro Stock champion, Bob Glidden. Well, Bob Glidden, after some bad luck this year in final rounds, you pulled this one off. You seemed very alert on the starting line. Did you think Lombardo was really gunning for you right there? Well, when you're lucky enough to win some races, everyone guns for you, and Larry is a good driver. Uh, I think the starting line was a good leave, and uh, it seemed to be our day to win. Well, before this year is out, you'll be able to change that two on your window to a one and be the world champion. I'd love it. I hope we do. Okay, the funny cars are cackling on the starting line. David, back to you. Thank you, Steve. And some $10,000 riding on this run. Ed McCulloch against Denny Savage for the title funny car champion at the Summer Nationals. The big question is, what's the racetrack like? There have been no runs on it. You saw just the one just now as Bob Glidden won the title in pro stock. Nobody knows how these high horsepower, 2,000 horsepower funny cars will react to the track conditions because the rains overnight have cleaned the surface. The traction was exceptionally good all day long yesterday. Nobody knows what it's like until the clutch is let out and the accelerator pushed to the floor. Both cars staging very gently. And McCulloch into a wheel stand. He had to back out of it. Denny Savage is the winner. 6.46 seconds, not an astounding run by any stretch of the imagination, but in instant replay slow motion, you see the wheel stand by Ed McCulloch that possibly cost him the race. 
Here again, Steve Evans. I think we have a very excited and a very tired Denny Savage on our hands. You want it? Thank God. I don't know what to say. You've been racing a lot of years. Is this your biggest thrill? It has to be. It's been a long time coming. Sure has. Well, sometimes when those NHRA Oscars are first won, they just keep on coming. Well, I hope so. I really do. Two cars remain. Top fuel eliminator, Jeb Allen. Runner up here a year ago, he lost when his car would not start on the starting line. He's looking around now saying, where's his competition? And that's the question. Gary Beck has problems. The car will not start. The crew man working on it. He throws down the wrench. And you see with a nod of the head, he tells Gary Beck, there is no way that it will start. Jeb Allen gets a single for the top fuel title. 24 years old, his second Summer Nationals title. He won it in 1972 at the age of 24. Gary Beck sitting, watching as Jeb Allen saving the parts for another day because there'll be another race. And Jeb Allen, the winner, look at him applauding as the car sort of guides itself down the racetrack. And an elated Jeb Allen just applauding himself and dejection on the face of Gary Beck as he gets pushed back into the pit area. Beck losing as his car would not start. And here's Jeb Allen, a very happy young man. Let's go to Steve with Jeb Allen. Jeb Allen, last year it was you who couldn't start your car in a bizarre final. This race seems to make a habit of that sort of thing in Top Fuel. Yeah, uh, I don't know. We, we tried our best, you know, we worked all night long on our car, got it prepared for the final, and come to find out, you know, the track conditions, I didn't want to run it through. I felt my motor is a 580 motor at this point, and I see no reason to jeopardize that. We're, we're looking for, you know, a win in Montreal, and possibly if we can win that, we'll start chasing the points and come in in the running anyways. I don't know if we can win it or not. Sinuses feel like a mattress, uh, overstuffed. So what do you take, Mr. Grayson? Sometimes aspirin, sometimes capsule. Would you believe Dristan relieves as many sinus cold miseries as aspirin and time capsules put together? What's with the big box? I'll show you. Aspirin relieves some symptoms, capsules some, but Dristan relieves them all. It does say so in the box. I guess it's true. Dristan tablets give more complete sinus cold relief. Read the box in your store. And try the Dristan. This Summer Nationals Championship certainly had a group of variables. The biggest, probably the weather. All day long, the weather conditions worsening. By the time we got to the finals in Funny Car, Pro Stock, and Top Fuel, the rains came. That delayed it overnight. Track conditions the next day, just a little bit tricky. Other variables, the defeat of Don Prudhomme, Mr. Consistency in Funny Car, the hands of a hole shot by Ron Colson. Gary Beck certainly proved his performance potential is back as he established low elapsed time at 5.86 seconds. And Shirley Muldowney, of course, she also performing very well. Jeb Allen winning the race the same way he lost it last year, his competition unable to fire. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan, saying so long for now from Raceway Park in Englishtown, New Jersey. The NHRA Summer Nationals has been brought to you by Fram, makers of oil, air, and fuel filters, windshield wipers, and Autolite spark plug and tune-up kits. And by Kodak, whose Color Burst Instant Cameras give you bright, brilliant, bursting color by Kodak. Promotional consideration received and a fee paid by Whammo. It's a whole new ball game, Trackball by Whammo. The executive producer of Diamond P Sports, Harvey Pallage. Our producer director, John Muller.
Coverage of the ninth annual NHRA Summer Nationals has been a Diamond P Sports presentation.